Hello everyone. In our previous video, we discussed about the lipid composition of the biological membrane. So in this video, we'll be covering of the protein composition of the biological membrane. So as we said, membrane, biological membrane is made up of lipid, protein, and carbohydrates. So now we'll be discussing about proteins. So what are the types of proteins that useful in making of a biological membrane? So there are two types of proteins exist in a biological membrane. One is peripheral protein, other one is integral protein. So what do you mean by peripheral protein and integral membrane proteins? So peripheral proteins, to see the diagram here, you can make out here, peripheral proteins which are present outer surface of the membrane. Okay, two surfaces are there. One is outer surface, other one is inner surface. Okay, for biological membrane, two surfaces, outer and inner surface and peripheral proteins which are present outer surface of the membrane. Okay, they are in linkage to the lipid. Okay, they are in linkage to the lipid with ionic and polar bonds. You can see here, these are the ionic and polar bonds. Right, and other way, intrinsic proteins are there which are present in the inner side of the membrane. Okay, this green color. Okay, they are in association with disulfide linkages and electrostatic interactions. Okay, electrostatic interactions means plus and negative charges to the lipid. So, integral proteins, they are commonest compared uh, with the peripheral proteins. Integral proteins are the commonest one. So, they interact extensively with the phospholipids. They embedded or span the entire distance of the membrane to the inside of the membrane and attached by hydrophobic bonds or van der Waals forces. Hydrophobic bonds are nothing but, so proteins are made up of hydrophobic uh, amino acids, the amino acids which are, uh, what to say, not soluble in water, okay. So they have functional group which are having hydrophobic groups. So these hydrophobic groups make bonds with the hydrophobic tails of the, uh, hydrophobic tails of the lipid bilayer, okay, phospholipids, All right. And they, acting as receptors or ion channels. So as present inside of the membrane, so they acting as a communication to inside of the cell by making receptors or ion channels. So you see here integral proteins, how they are starting with N, N terminal. This is N terminal, this is a protein and this is a C terminal. So how it is making a channel or like a receptor, uh, like what to say, ionic channel or uh, receptors. So this is present inside of the cell from here, it is spanning throughout the cell membrane and coming to the outside of outer surface of the membrane again. So this way, it is going inside again, coming outside. So finally, this is the end. So any protein you take, two terminals are there. This is amino terminal end. This is carboxy terminal end. Right. So what is the use of this? That means it gives a better communication from inside to outside. Okay, so that's why integral proteins are more common compared with the external or peripheral protein. So this is an example of glucose transporter, okay, which is spanning like uh, from inside to outside, which is helpful in carrying glucose from outside to inside. So glycolipid like proteins which are like uh, association with carbohydrates. So glycolipid in the sense carbohydrate plus lipid, which is attached to the protein. Okay, that means this is a protein and over the protein, this glycolipid is there. Okay, and anchoring with protein-protein interactions and anchoring with glycolipids. So protein-protein interaction in the sense, external protein or peripheral protein in association, this is the outer protein or you can say peripheral, peripheral protein and this is internal protein. So both are joined by protein protein interactions so here this protein anchored with phospholipid you see here this is phospholipid okay and this protein anchored with the phospholipid as a single one there is no association only carbohydrate is present glycoprotein you can say that one and multiple paths so here one this is one this is two this is three so multiple coiling of the protein to form multiple passes so this way proteins are winded up in the cell membrane. The integral membrane proteins to talk about, 
they are deeply embedded in bilayer and are attached by hydrophobic bonds or vulnerable forces okay as we have mentioned earlier some of the integral membrane proteins span whole bilayer they are called transmembrane proteins so transmembrane proteins here this one is a example for transmembrane transmembrane protein the hydrophobic side chains which are of like what to say the hydrophobic side chains which are present the structural unit of the amino acid like functional part of the amino acid okay which are hydrophobic in nature embedded in the hydrophobic central core of the membrane so as we mentioned hydrophilic heads outside and hydrophobic core or tail are inside so with this tail these hydrophobic amino acids make interactions the transmembrane proteins can serve as receptors okay for hormones like hormone means hormone is not directly allowed inside okay so to transfer its information they require some transporters so this function or like uh, activity taken over by the proteins so that's why they are known as receptors information receptors this uh, proteins which are present in the membrane acting as a information receptors for hormones growth factors or neurotransmitters and tissue specific antigens ion channels and membrane based enzymes so peripheral membrane proteins integral membrane proteins and transmembrane proteins you can see here peripheral membrane protein this is a peripheral integral peri uh, integral membrane protein this one okay this is peripheral this is integral no no not this one integral one second this is integral okay and this will be transmembrane because it is winding throughout the throughout the cell membrane okay throughout the cell membrane so how this mechanism okay the transportation mechanism works throughout the cell membrane so ldl i can take example ldl receptor so ldl receptor is nothing but transportation of cholesterol from liver to other parts of the body so okay once it reaches to the target uh, organ or target tissue how it dumps the cholesterol so you can see here ldl is carrying cholesterol and when it reaches to the outer surface of the any cell okay when it in get in contact with the ldl receptor this nothing, nothing but the carbohydrate which is in association with the protein present over the outer surface of the membrane okay in, re in relation to form ldl receptor so once this ldl in contact with the ldl receptor it makes a clathrin coated pit by endocytosis it will go inside so and when it go inside the cholesterol content of the ldl will be released and then again they form vesicles and these vesicles will reach to the outer side of the membrane and releases the empty ldl okay so filled ldl that means what it by filled it filled by cholesterol it enters inside the cell okay and it releases the cholesterol and again after uh, dumping the cholesterol the empty ldl will be sent out okay so the receptors for most growth factors are transmembrane tyrosine specific protein kinases that means enzyme related they are, they are like platelet derived growth factors which is present in the cell membrane okay and fibroblast growth factors hepatocyte growth factors insulin insulin like growth factor 1 nerve growth factor vascular endothelial growth factor macrophage colony stimulating factor receptor tyrosine kinase are which are divided into six types so these are all present over the cell membrane so when insulin comes this insulin growth factor will uh, attaches and they will allow the insulin to go inside same way when fibroblastic growth factor hepatocyte growth factor vascular endothelial cell growth factor macrophage macrophage colony stimulating factor all these receptors present over the cell membrane they are in combination of carbohydrates proteins and lipids so this is like ligand bind causing the external growth factor receptors to assemble into dimers you see here ligand binding site so this is a ligand so over the cell membrane they are there they are the ligand binding site so where this ligand specific ligand will bind and it causes some chemical changes inside the cell where when ligand bind to this particular binding site or outside the cell membrane there are 
changes of inside where atp converted adp that means particular protein will be phosphorylated and particular protein will be unphosphorylated so based on the cellular demand so this is also ligand binding uh, multiple tyrosine residues so coming to carbohydrates so carbohydrates they are the least concentrated part in making of biological membrane only 2 to 80 percent 8 percent by the white and they are in mostly not in uh, direct form they are in association with protein or with the lipids like uh, in association with proteins glycoproteins in association with lipids glycolipids so always towards the outer side they don't have any role in the inner biological membrane okay they are always present in the outside they have internal on external surface carrying the carry uh, carbohydrates glycophorin is a channel which is useful in transport of glucose inside the cell you see here RBC membrane okay so this is a glycophorin so where so many carbohydrates attached to the protein okay where to me so many carbohydrates these yellow colored beads are carbohydrates okay yellow colored beads are carbohydrates attached to the this one this blue color one is a protein so this is known as glycophorin and uh, this one transmembrane which is involved in transport of uh, glucose inside the cell where carbohydrate is attached which is spanning across the cell membrane so coming to functions of cell membrane so what are the things as i mentioned protection giving protection to the subcellular organelles so it is acting as a protective sheet and uh, transportation of ions and molecules to inside of the and outside of the cell recognition of various stimuli cell to cell signaling cell to cell contact and contains receptors for biomolecules like hormones and neurotransmitters to the transferring the information from hormones and neurotransmitters cell morphology and movement and compartmentalization because one cell belongs to one compartment other cell uh, belongs to other compartment like what to say the, because of the cell membrane subcellular organelles also compartmentalized and membrane is very active in the case like metabolically it is very active membrane is metabolically very active and it contains ectoenzyme 5 nucleotidase this is a marker for biological membrane other one is alkaline phosphatase for outer membrane for inner membrane 5 prime nucleotidase okay two enzymes are there five prime nucleotidase for uh, inside inner membrane for outer membrane alkaline phosphatase so these are all the things so membranes are made up of lipids proteins and small amounts of carbohydrates their composition varies in different membranes based on their function okay glycoproteins glycolipids phospholipids and cholesterol are the important macromolecules present in the membrane so to make a membrane you require glycoproteins that means combination of carbohydrates proteins glycolipids carbohydrates plus lipids phospholipids you are all know okay fatty acids like to say phospholipids complex type of lipids okay and cholesterol which are all required for making of a cell membrane and lipid bilayer shows free lateral movement and it is called fluid in nature however flip flop movement is restricted okay they are freely movable but flip flop movement is restricted inner to outer fluidity enables endocytosis and exocytosis cholesterol content alters the fluidity of the membrane and unsaturated fatty acid increases fluidity of the membrane that means pufa polyunsaturated fatty acids are main in making of lipid bilayer and in alcoholic cirrhosis pus cells are seen because of increased rbc cholesterol content leading to less fluidity so that is a clinical significance of biological membrane okay and the plasma membrane which is separated the cell from external environment it is highly selective permeability properties that entry and exit of compounds are regulated okay and the cellular metabolism in turn influenced and probably regulated by membrane the membrane is metabolically very active so these are all the key functions of the plasma membrane or biological membrane so the enzymes as i said five prime nucleotidase and alkaline phosphatase are the marker enzymes for biological membrane so that's all about biological membrane thanks for listening